y'all. Today we're going to go over constructed responses again, and we're going to learn something called racers. It's a way to help us write constructed responses. Now, I know I already taught you using the writing guide, the color-coded writing guide, but that's okay. I don't want you to sweat it. This is very similar to the color-coded writing guide. It's just going to use letters to help you to remember which parts of the constructed response go where. So no stress. This is super easy, and again, it's called race. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> Let's get her started. So, racers. What is racers here? Racers just stands for the first. Each of the letters in racers stands for one of the types of sentences you have to provide. And here's a chart that I'll provide to you to help you to remember racers. So, the RA in racers, it's the first sentences. You're going to restate the question prompt and give the answer to it. That could be one or two sentences. Then we're going to move on to the C. And the C is textual support and it's also called citation or citing that's why it's a C so in the C sentence you cite evidence by providing a quote from the text in the E sentence you explain how your textual support relates to your answer and in the R sentence it's a repeat now this is going to go one of two ways if you only have one question to answer there's not a two-part or three-part question you're simply going to repeat C and E so you'll provide support you'll explain it and then you'll repeat that you'll provide more support and explain it and provide more support and explain it depending on how much you need how much support you need to support your answer or if it's a two-part question, you're going to need to re-answer the second part of the question in here in the R and then repeat C and E, textual support and explanation. And the final sentence signals to the reader that you are finished and sums up what you wrote. So see, Racers is not that different from our color-coded writing guide, so you're going to do great at it. Zoom, zoom. So finding the main idea, this is something that we did in class yesterday and I just want to review it quickly because we're going to use it for our constructed response sample today. So finding the main idea in the adventures of Tom Sawyer, everybody did great with this in class. So we took a look at this passage here and we, we read in the introduction that Tom faked his death. And when the town found out, the town was devastated. They were so sad. So what details from the passage, I've made up a question, what details from the passage support the main idea that the town was sad over Tom's death? And again, we did that in class today. So what details from the passage support the main idea that the town was sad over Tom's death? This passage is sad. The main idea of this passage is everyone was sad over Tom's death. What's our support? Well, again, you did that in class today. You did a great job with it, but let's take a look and remind ourselves. So we know the main idea is the town was sad because Tom died. And the supporting detail one that we pulled directly out of the text was the Harpers and Aunt Polly's family were being put into mourning with great grief and many tears. The supporting detail two that we found was the villagers talked little, but they sighed often, another indication of sadness. And finally, supporting detail three, the holiday scene, the Saturday holiday seemed a burden to children. Again, another sign of sadness when children are feeling the burden. Now, let's translate that into the guide. So when we translate that into racers, we take our, um, our first sentence and our answer and we kind of put them together. You can separate them into two sentences if you want to, and we would restate the question and answer it. So there are several key details that support the main idea that the town was sad after Tom died. There's our restatement and our answer. There are, in fact, several key details. That's our answer. Then C, we cite, that's textual support. It is told to us in the text that the Harpers and Aunt Polly's family were being put into mourning with grief and many tears. We already saw that we found that information. Now we're using it. Then we explain that citation or textual support. Tom lived with Aunt Polly and was so close and was close to the Harpers. So mourning is a typical sad reaction to losing someone you love. There you go. Now this particular question required only one answer with several pieces of support. It was only a one-part question. So we're simply going to repeat C and E so that we can provide more textual support. The villagers talk little, but they sighed often, the narrator explains. This makes sense in this situation because people, people in mourning do not engage in conversation and often find themselves sighing in disbelief. Now I want you to repeat that again. The sadness of the town is further confirmed in the sentence, the Saturday holiday seemed a burden to the children. Even the children felt the sadness of the situation, a final explanation sentence. Then we move into our S sentence. and. The final S sentence signals to the reader that you are finished and sums up 
what you wrote. For those, for these reasons, I believe the main idea that the town is sad over Tom's death is confirmed by key details and events throughout the passion, passage. There you go. Racers. Restate, answer, cite, explain. This particular one required us to cite, explain again, cite, explain again, and then simply signal to the reader you're finished and sum it up. And that's a constructed response. Don't believe me? Zoom, zoom. Here is what that final passage is going to look like. When you take everything out of the chart that guided you out of the research chart and put it into a paragraph, this is what you wind up with. Pretty, isn't it? All right, so let's try one more with a different model. And this model is going to use the re-answer, repeat CNE model. So this means that we have a two-part question here. Let's see what I mean by that. Response, RNA. Here's our first part. We're going to restate an answer. The main character from the passage can be described as an angry and impatient person. And I apologize, I didn't read this first part. We're going to pretend that we read a passage and have to describe the main character from the passage. So here's our response. RNA. The main character from the passage can be described as an angry and impatient person. Good job. Now we're going to cite by, we're going to use textual support. We're going to cite. Here comes our C. It is obvious she is an angry person when the narrator says she threw the phone into the wall. I'll say. Then we have E, which is an explanation for that. When someone is angry, they usually release their frustration by damaging things around them, and that is exactly what the main character did with her phone. Now, there's more than one characteristic, so we need to re-answer. There is also evidence to support that the main character is an impatient person. We repeat this citation now. At this point in the story, when she was told she would need to wait her turn, she turned to her best friend and whined about the super long wait. Now we repeat an explanation for that. In reality, she only had to wait for five minutes, which is not a long wait, so her response shows that she has very little patience with these types of situations. For these reasons, the character is clearly an angry and impatient person. And there we go. We went right through the racers model. We did it a little bit differently. We answered a question with two answers, but we still provided our citation and explanation. Hope you're all getting this. All right, so what now? Where does that bring us? That brings us to our, well, usually our review, but today we're going to go to our extend activity. What you're gonna do with this information is you're gonna use your answers on the activity extends main idea and summarizing to write constructed responses for each passage, just like I did with the Tom Sawyer passage earlier in this recording. So you all did your extend, um, extend activity, or you're going to do it today if you're an asynchronous student. And what you have to do is take your answers now. So that process is going to look a little something like this. You began on your activity with either a graphic organizer or an idea organizer that was in bulleted points. And you answered, you read passages and you answered. And then you took that graphic organizer and you're, go you're gonna take that organizer from your, your extend activity and you're gonna put it onto the racer chart, uh, racer's chart. And you're going to fill in all of these paragraphs or all of these sentences rather. And then you're gonna take that to the final phase of the writing process, which is turning it into an actual paragraph. And that's it. You're going to be done. So asynchronous students, you can work on this entire thing. Submit to the Dropbox by the end of the day. And my synchronous students, I'll see you in class where we'll go over it some more. That's it. Go away, folks, or I shall taunt you for a second time with more constructed responses. See you later, all.